The fossilized remains of an unknown dinosaur species were recently discovered in South Africa. This dinosaur is quite large, it's actually pretty huge, close to twice the size of an African elephant, standing about 13 feet tall at its hips, and weighing an estimated 13 tons. It's a big boy, and it fits nicely into the current models of sauropod evolution and geographic radiation. A co-author of the study, paleontologist Jonah Chonier, were eager to describe the findings. He said, quote, It's the first true giant that evolves in a long line of dinosaurs called sauropod dinosaurs, unquote. Okay, so this is really neat. Basically, they've found a fossil of a dinosaur that existed both geographically and temporally near the origin of the sauropod lineage. Perhaps the most famous sauropod is the humongous Brontosaurus, whose mature body, with their long necks and their long tails, weighed more than 60 tons, which is just incredible. These quadruped dinosaurs are some of the largest land animals that ever walked across the terrestrial surface of the Earth. Now, this most recent finding is of a sauropod called the Ledumahadi mafube, which lived around 200 million years ago. In this primordial era, the El Mufabe, with its 13-ton bulk, would have been the largest creature around. Well, at least the largest creature on land. The sea has always been home to terrifyingly large creatures, but that's a different topic. Now, the lead author of this study, Dr. Blair McPhee, said, quote, The first thing that struck me about this animal is the incredible robustness of the limb bones. It was of similar size to the gigantic sauropod dinosaurs, but whereas the arms and legs of those animals are typically quite slender, Ledu Mahadis are incredibly thick. To me, this indicated that the path towards gigantism in sauropodomorphs was far from straightforward and that the way that these animals solved the usual problems of life, such as eating and moving, was much more dynamic within the group than previously thought." Unquote. Again, this is really neat. The implication of it having thick, heavy legs is that it would have stood like a cat, with a crouched posture. This is almost like a transitional form between the slender, column-like legs of later sauropods and the more squat-based posture of their bipedal ancestors. The study also found that quadruped behavior likely evolved multiple times in the sauropod lineage, and it might have evolved earlier than thought, as a quadruped posture would facilitate, or provide the physiological basis, for the evolution of even larger body sizes. This is to say that your body can only evolve to be so big when you're standing on two legs, you can only handle so much weight on those joints. But if you're a quadruped and you have two extra legs on the ground, you're spreading your weight around quite a lot. And this opens the door for your body to grow much larger because that posture can support a lot more weight. Additionally, the study also found that this El Mufabi behemoth is closely related to the Leoncoupal laticata, which is another early sauropod. Except the El laticata was found in South America, whereas the El Mufabi was found in South Africa. This actually jives with the geologic data that suggests that around 200 million years ago, around the time that these massive thunder lizards were roaming the Paleozoic wilderness, the South American and African landmasses were fused together. They were part of a greater supercontinent called Pangaea. During the periods of time where these supercontinents exist, animals can roam great distances, and their populations can become very spread out from one another. When tectonic activity breaks up the supercontinent into smaller continental pieces of land, populations can become isolated from their sibling populations that happen to live on other land masses. Having been reproductively isolated through an impassable geographic barrier, the separated populations will then evolve according to their respective habitats, and they'll diverge into separate species. We can see the evidence for this all over the world, across all kinds of animals, and across the formation and the breakup of numerous supercontinents. These sauropods were just one more species that emerged in one particular location, and then radiated outwards, and were then separated by the slow geological processes of the Earth. I can't get enough of this stuff, because I think it's just so fascinating. And it's fascinating because these fossils 
hold so many stories. Not just the story of one particular individual whose bones happen to be turned into minerals over millions of years, and not just the story of a particular lineage that once had this particular form at this particular time, but the greater stories of biogeographical change, of dinosaur evolution, and how these pieces fit together into the larger, planet-spanning puzzle that is the evolutionary cascade of life. Thank you.